This video is going to show you how to create sound effects uh, that you can trigger in main stage in a musical theater context. A lot of uh, uh, newer shows are calling for sound effects to be triggered in a more musical sense uh, than a traditional sound cue. It really fits in with the orchestration. Uh, if you're getting books from MTI or Rodgers and Hammerstein uh, for the first time and you see these, you might not know how to trigger them. I use Mainstage for all of my keyboard programming, and I think it's the easiest and uh, uh, simplest way uh, to create those sound effects. So let me give you a real brief tutorial on the mechanics of getting it set up. So the first thing we'll want to do is figure out what we're going to be working on. For the, uh, this demonstration, we're going to look at the jackhammer patch from the second keyboard book in Avenue Q. And you can see that it's mapped to the lowest A on the keyboard. Uh, so the first thing you'll do is find your jackhammer sound effect. You can find sound effects in uh, a multitude of places online. Uh, just Google whatever sound effect you need, jackhammer sound effect, and you'll come up with a range of options. Find one that's either uh, shared under a Creative Commons license, or uh, you can purchase one for a few bucks from a variety of different sites. You can find some of those links in the description of this video. So once you have that file, uh, save it to your hard drive. I've already done so. And now let's walk through the process of mapping it to a key. So first, let's make sure that our MIDI controller has the note that we need. So we're going to make sure it has 88 keys and the lowest note is A0. Once we have that done, you're going to go back into main stage and uh, in whatever patch you happen to be using, uh, you'll create a new channel strip. And you can just use whatever settings you're using for the rest of your show programming. So on that new channel strip, you're going to click the instrument input and we're going to select EXS 24 sampler and you can select the stereo version. Once that opens up, you'll uh, find this window. You can adjust the view by uh, changing the percentage under the view menu. Uh, sometimes it defaults to 100%, which is a little small. Uh, so 175 usually works better. Once you're into this window, right away click Edit. That's going to bring up the instrument editor window. And you'll see here is a keyboard with all of the MIDI notes uh, on it. Some of these your keyboard may or may not have depending on how large it is. And then up here are where we're going to put our different sound zones. So the first thing you'll do is create a new zone and you'll see this blue bar appears. That shows you that this zone covers the entire keyboard. Any note you press will trigger the sound effect that we're going to add. We'll change that later. But let's get a sound effect loaded. So under audio file and under name you'll see a little down arrow. Click that and then click Load Audio Sample. That'll bring up just your regular file selection window. I've selected uh, a Jackhammer Sound from soundbible.com and I've converted it to a WAV file using a free program called Adapter. Again, that link will be in the description. Select your WAV file, click Open. That'll load it up uh, into this zone and you'll see that uh, now any key you press will trigger that sound. But you'll notice that it uh, changes pitch as you go up and down the keyboard range. This is probably not something we want in our jackhammer sound effect. So go over to your playback column and underneath that you'll see pitch. What main stage will do, what EXS24 will do, is it will read the bass pitch of your, um, of your sample and here it defaults to middle C, C4. So on the C4 key that's where the basically raw audio file will be, and that's without any transposition. As we go up, you'll hear it's increasing by half steps. Could be a cool effect um, for other sound effects, but for this, we really don't want that. So let's uncheck pitch. Now, all the keys across the keyboard, no matter high, how high or low, trigger the same sound effect. And let's look a little bit further into the playback column. There's also one shot. If you check this, you can press the key and the entire file will now play, even if you let go of the key. So you can see I've moved my mouse away and it's still playing. That can be uh, useful if you have uh, a certain type of sound effect, uh, let's say uh, the uh, bomb uh, falling and explosion in springtime for Hitler and the producers. Um, but for an effect like this, it's actually more helpful to turn it off because if we look back at the score, we only need it to last three measures. 
so we don't, uh, we, let's, if we uncheck one shot, we can hold it down as long as we need. And even if that tempo fluctuates from uh, performance to performance, we can, can still, we still can control the, fir the beginning and the end of the sound effect. Now we need to make sure that it only plays on one note, because as you can see, uh, in this patch, you are playing strings in your right hand and then immediately play the jackhammer in the left. To avoid making a really fast pass patch change back and forth, we're going to map this to just the very uh, lowest note on the keyboard, which is A0. So the easiest way to do that is go over to key range, double click it, and then simply type in your low note, A0, and then the high note is also A0. That maps it to one single key. You can see down here that that blue bar, which previously covered all of these, now just is on one note, and all other notes are silent. So that looks like it covers all of the basics that we need for this sound effect. So let's go ahead and save this off. You'll click Instrument, click Save As, and we're going to call this AvQ Jackhammer. This will save into the sampler instruments uh, section of your concert file. So you can take this from one computer to another, and your sample data and your instrument data will all be in one place. Once you've selected the title, just click Save. And now you'll see that it's saved as an EXS instrument, and you can close this window. That'll take you back to the EXS24 uh, uh, control uh, panel. So you want to make sure that your new sample is saved or is loaded. And uh, my concert right now is unsaved. So it says unsaved main stage three document and then Avenue Q jackhammer. Make sure that's selected right here. The rest of these controls you really won't have to look at uh, for most sound effects. Uh, they're just a couple that you'll want to know. This first uh, control is your velocity scaler. For things like this where we have a predetermined volume I close the, uh, the range so that it's, the level is at full. And then here is a volume control. You can do a little bit of volume control from within EXS24. You can also use the fader that you're used to uh, on the channel strip. If you like to keep your faders at uh, zero gain, this is the place to adjust the sound effect level. Once you have that all completed, you'll click close. That'll take you back to uh, your window. And let's test out our sound effect. So you find the note that we had mapped it to, which is A0. Give it a click, and there we go. And you can see all of the other notes are empty or silent. So what I like to do, just so that uh, if uh, there's a different player other than yourself uh, working on the project, what I like to do is even though we've silenced all the other notes and mapped our sound effect to just one note, I find it helpful to actually adjust the key range so that it only displays the keys that are actually triggered uh, by the different patches. It helps the programmer to stay organized and it also is going to help your player to stay organized. So I can have my low note as the jackhammer. And now let's just quickly throw some strings on here to account for the other um, uh, for the other uh, sound in that patch, let's just choose basic string ensemble. Here's where you want to be careful because it automatically will map to the entire range of your keyboard, which will give us this. You'll get both strings and your jackhammer, so you'll just want to adjust the uh, in layer editor, the range of that string ensemble patch. Here I've adjusted it so that it goes almost to where my jackhammer is. It's just nice in case in the heat of the moment you hit the wrong note. Uh, you'll have, instead of the wrong sound, you'll just have silence. So here I have my string ensemble. A little bit of silence. And my jackhammer. And that is how you map a sound effect to a single key in Mainstage.